All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So I wanted to cover a topic today that I'm sure is on all of your minds because it's really been on my mind for quite some time. And as I'm sure you all know, the collecting landscape is completely changing for video games. You know, systems that used to be fun and affordable to collect for are basically out of reach for most people these days. Systems such as the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis and even stuff like the PS2 now, prices are just climbing and climbing and they're showing no signs of slowing down. Uh, even for cart only, you know, it doesn't even matter if it's complete in box anymore. So what I wanted to do today is show you guys what I consider to be my top five systems to collect for right now. Of course, it's a little biased because it's only systems that I find fun to collect and stuff from my collection. So, you know, I'm not really an NES guy or an Atari 2600 or ColecoVision kind of collector. So these five systems are, you know, my own personal opinion. So what do you say we start with one from last generation? And that is the PlayStation 3. And I'm gonna put this one coincide with the Xbox 360. I'm gonna put them both as sort of like the same thing because there are a lot of games that share um, a release on both platforms. But this is the absolute perfect time. If you've ever wanted to get into like the PlayStation Move, you can pick up titles like Child of Eden, uh, House of the Dead Overkill, and little gems like this, uh, Sorcery. Uh, the Move, I'm not sure what the preferables go for that right now, but I'm sure you can probably get the whole setup really cheap. And then you can also go back and find games like Sly Cooper uh, and even Puppeteer, a very late release PS3 game that I'm sure is probably $10 or $15 at the most these days. And then you can go back and play some of the older games that were released, you know, quite a few years ago, such as the Eco Shadow of the Colossus collection. There's a lot of great compilations on the PS3 that you can probably get easily for 10 bucks, even brand new. Uh, keep an eye out on Amazon for their big sales, their flash deals, their Black Friday sales, because you can get a lot of this stuff really, really cheap on there. I can't tell you how many PS3 games that I've picked up on Black Friday sales for under $10. And then really old titles such as Folklore, 3D.Game Heroes, and Heavy Rain. And I can probably guarantee that most of these games here would be the same price as if you, you know, if you went out to eat for lunch. Ten bucks, eight bucks, whatever the heck it's going to be. Uh, PS3 is very affordable to collect for right now. Even the RPGs that are on the console have maintained a, a pretty affordable price range. And then to go along with that is, of course, the Xbox 360. So the Xbox 360 right now, you can get games so cheap. This is the perfect time to do it um, before stuff starts to rise in price because we all know it's inevitable it's going to come. But this is when to do it. Why? Because GameStop is like liquidating and trying to get rid of all this stuff. I don't personally shop at GameStop, but I know I always hear all the time of, of these sales of like buy two, get one free constantly. And then you got like deals on top of that. You can get RPGs like Eternal Sonata, Divinity 2, which is despite having a really ba bad frame rate, actually a pretty decent game. Uh, Infinite Undiscovery. Now, of course, some of these games you might have to shop for online, but you can still get them pretty cheap. And one of my personal favorite RPGs of all time last generation is Lost Odyssey, which I believe you can get for less than $10 now. So now is the time to jump on it. And then I've got a selection of titles here that are some of my absolute personal favorites from last generation, such as El Shaddai. Such a sleeper hit that if you have not played El Shaddai, please, the game has to be like seven bucks by now. Uh, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic Elements, a fantastic game. Even if the online no longer works, it's still really good. Nier, who can pass up Nier? Look, even back then, I paid $13 pre-owned for Nier. This game now, I'm sure it's even cheaper. Games like Vanquish. You know, maybe you couldn't stomach the fact of spending $60 for a game that you can beat in, you know, a few hours, but now I'm sure you can probably pick this up for, you know, 10 bucks. Asura's Wrath, uh, one of the best games I played last generation, and it's probably criminally underplayed. A lot of people probably have still not touched this game. It's on both platforms. Please, Asura's Wrath has to be dirt cheap these days. Please give it a try. Enslaved, one of the, oh my god, I just can't, I picked out so many good games here, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Enslaved is one of my favorite games of last generation as well. Another game that's probably dirt cheap. Uh, Castlevania Lords of Shadow, I mean, a lot of people avoided this game because they looked at it and they were like, that's not Castlevania. Maybe it's not. It shares some themes. It's got some nods to the series, but oh my god, is this a good action game. And then you have games like Lollipop Chainsaw, which started coming out towards the later end of the 360's life cycle, and you know, I paid full price for this, and now you can probably get this game for eight bucks, is my guess. And then, kind of keeping with that Microsoft Xbox theme, right now, is the perfect time to collect for the original Xbox. I know everybody's saying this right now. 
and it is true, this is the perfect time to collect for the original Xbox. Some prices on certain games are starting to go up, like Stubbs the Zombie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, you know, but there's not too many exceptions that are really expensive. So for example, one of my favorite things to do is to go into a game store, like a, you know, a play and trade or like a convention and just go through the Xbox like bargain bins. And uh, actually at a recent convention, I came across Breakdown. I actually got this for free. Um, because I bought some other game. The guy had this in a $5 bin, but even $5, it's like, it's that point right now where I'm okay with throwing a few dollars at a game that I might not be sure of, because it's only a few dollars. I mean, I don't have to think about, gee, that's a $20 game. Should I get that? Will I like it? For a few bucks, I mean, and a system that I'm going to be getting here to in a little bit, I, I share very similar uh, feelings about, where even if this game is bad, I paid a few dollars for it, you know, I could always trade it or sell it down the line or, you know, just add it to the collection of sort of like a talking point and for, you know, a future discussion that might come up for Xbox. But, uh, for example, I went to a, a local chain store play and trade, and this was last year sometime, and I picked up a whole bunch of games for like, they had a sale, buy two, get one free. And they're asking five bucks, and I was in the insider club, so like this game here, Jaeger, two bucks, basically. Uh, Torque, Prehistoric Punk. This game, I think, cost me eight bucks. It's a platformer I've never played before. Tack and the Power of Juju. Look at this. They were asking five bucks, eight bucks. These games here were like four bucks each, basically, for a great platformer series that I've heard really good things about. Oh, here's another one. Gunmetal, five dollars. Whiplash, five dollars. Splashdown, four dollars. And this is a buy two, get one free sale. So it's like these games are practically two to three dollars each on top of the discount. I mean, it's... Think of it this way. Would you rather spend $60 for a new game where you're not even sure if you're going to like it? And then, you know, if you don't like it, you better sell that game off fast so you get your money back. Or would you rather take that $60 and buy a whole bucket load of original Xbox games that, you know, maybe 80% of them aren't really that great. But then you find that 20% where you're like, wow, this is so fantastic. And you end up playing that game longer than you would have played that brand new, you know, Xbox One PS4 game that you bought. So now let's move on to uh, my absolute, f one of my absolute favorite consoles. Actually, it probably is my favorite console to collect for right now. And that's the PlayStation 1. I firmly believe that the PlayStation 1 right now is the console that you guys probably should be collecting for. Why? There's what, just under 800 games for the console and why I find it so fun. This console is just, it, it always surprises me. Why it's so fun is because I'm still finding games that I had no idea even existed and the best part is these games that I find are like between two to like $5. I go to conventions, I go to game stores. For example, I went to Digital Press in New Jersey last year after I was coming back from a convention and I went to their PS1 section. I swear, it was I was like a kid in a candy store. I'm there picking through the shelves, I'm going through every game and I'm just constantly finding these games. And I'm like, this is awesome because they're only a few bucks each. And, uh, you know, just to go through a few games here, I don't remember if all of these were from Digital Press, but I've just picked out a stack of racing games alone, okay? Kind of like obscure couple dollar racing games. Extreme Go-Kart. I think that game was pretty bad. Micro Machines Racing. Uh, RC Racer Team Lozy. Killer Loop. RC Revenge. Uh, Bravo Air Race, you know, just as an example, and there's way more racing games that I have on the PS1, and all of those were just a couple of bucks each. Take a chance, some of them are horrible, you know, I, I do a lot of streaming on Twitch too, so, you know, some of these are kind of fun to stream for people, even if they are bad, and then I come across games like this, Ray Tracers, which I streamed and played, and this game was a blast, this game was like eight bucks, and I never really knew about this game, like, I've, I've known of the name Ray Tracers, but I never knew what kind of game it was, and that's why the PS1 is just so much fun, because there's so many cheap games, so many fun experiences. It takes me back to the days where you had to rely on just going to the game store, looking at a cover, flipping that game around. And this is what I do. This is why it's so much fun and so nostalgic in a way. Like, I, I actually have to read the back of these games and check out the screenshots. And I look at the cover and I'm like, yeah, that seems worth a few dollars. Let's give it a try. So I just wanted to quickly go through just as an example for some of you guys that may not realize like all of the weird kind of obscure or kind of unknown games that are out there for the PS1. This is a stack of games. Um, I don't think I've played any of these yet. These are all stuff I've picked up from conventions. And you notice a lot of these have price tags that are under $10 for the most part are actually under $5. I'm gonna try them out, see how they are. Machine Hunter, Colony Wars Red Sun, 
Tai Fu. Floating Runner Quest for the Seven Crystals. I mean, it looks like a budget, pretty horrible game, and it probably is, but you know, I only paid a few bucks for that game. Tiger Shark. Tiny Tank. Epidemic. Tunnel B1, which I think I got for like $2. I mean, $2. How can you pass it up? Eliminator. Brahma Force. Blast Chamber. Broken Helix. And I love the cover art to this one. It's like a dragon. I don't know. A few bucks. Guys, that is why the PS1, and that's just a small fraction of what I picked out for the PS1, and there's so much more out there. So if you haven't, explore the PS1 sections of your game stores, go on the eBay, just type in PS1 complete, um, and then just sort by maybe like lowest first and, and see what comes up. You'll have a blast. All right, next is the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance right now, I feel, is one of the better systems to collect for because you can actually get a ton of really great games complete in the box, mind you, because I know a lot of people don't like to collect cart only. You can get a lot of games complete in the box really cheap. There's a few exceptions. Yeah, you have your Ninja 5.0s and, you know, you have your uh, RPGs on there that might be a little pricey, like Fire Emblem. But just to show you as an example, here's some games that uh, I haven't played yet, but I picked up for just a few bucks. Advanced Destruction Robot Wars, which looks like this kind of fun, top-down, twisted metal type game. Here's a shoot 'em up that's probably horrible, but Strike Force Hydra. Couldn't pass that up though. It was maybe like seven bucks complete in the box. This is still sealed. I bought this on eBay. Samurai Jack, the Amulet of Time, and the animation in this looks fantastic. So I wanted to give that a try. Uh, Miss Pac-Man Maze Madness. You never know. Sometimes you got to get these games that look like they're sort of deserving of being in the bargain bin, and they actually turn out to be pretty good games. Here's one a couple that I have played that I picked up on a whim. Dark Arena, fantastic first-person shooter on the Game Boy Advance. Visually quite stunning. Uh, this is one of the best undiscovered games that is on the Game Boy Advance that I'm, I feel a lot of people have not played. And that's The Legend of Spiral the Eternal Night. If you love combo-based side-scrolling action games like a Super Metroid Castlevania type game, you have to track this game down. You will not be disappointed. You know, just as an example, and it's not that expensive from what I remember. This is a game that I, I played not that long ago. Um, I got this in that bundle of Game Boy Advance games, for those of you that might remember that. Uh, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance, fantastic dungeon crawler, and you would have never known. It was so much fun. So Game Boy Advance right now, guys, I feel it's the perfect time to get into collecting for that console. Give it a chance. If you kind of put it off because you think it's too hard to get games complete in box, it's actually fairly easy. And talking about getting games complete in box, I got to go pretty fast here because my memory card is about to run out of space. Uh, the Atari Lynx, guys, I'm telling you, the Lynx right now is one of the absolute best consoles to collect for, especially if you like handhelds and you like stuff complete in box. I actually find that getting Link stuff complete in box is more common than getting it loose. So you can go on eBay, you can get a system and a bunch of games for like $100, $150 if you don't have one already. If you have the system already, the games on there are so dirt cheap. You can get lots with games like Toki. Uh, there's a lot of great ports on this system. This is Zybots, one of my personal favorites. Uh, Stun Runner, one of the most visually stunning games on the Link's Shadow of the Beast. Joust, you know, they got some good arcade ports on there. And even if you get into the more expensive, uh, obscure stuff like Crazy Ace, Mini Golf, and uh, Xenophobe, which I found for $24 at Portland last year. Uh, the Lynx is a ton of fun. It's affordable. It has games complete in box all over the place, and it's a really good system. So anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed that. And, uh, you know, hey, leave me some comments down below. What are some topics that you want me to cover? Because I'm back. I'm feeling good. I'm doing some renovation on the game room here, so I'm looking forward to coming back and talking games with you guys. And also, feel free to follow me on Twitch. I've been doing a lot of streaming on there multiple times a week, kind of playing obscure games and systems and consoles, such as the Virtual Boy and the Sega Pico, as an example. Um, so I hope to see you guys over there. We have a lot of fun. See you guys next time.